morning. Before we begin today's program, we ask wherever you are to please stand for prayer. Prayer. Surely I have turned myself to thee, O Allah, trying to be upright. To him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheist. Surely my prayer and my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all of my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me unto the best of morals, for none guides unto the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and indecent morals but thee. O oh, Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou didst make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified. O oh, Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praised and magnified. I mean, please be seated, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And those of you who are viewing all over this world via webcast, I greet you and we greet you in the greeting words of peace. We say it in our original language and tongue of Arabic, Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. Oh, it's so good to see you this morning. All praise is due to Allah. We thank Allah for another day of life in his magnificent universe. We thank Allah for blessing us with another opportunity to not only wake up this beautiful Sunday morning, but to be a part of his wonderful universe, to learn more about ourselves, to learn more about him, his aim, will, and purpose for us in our lives. All of us have an aim and a purpose. And that is why Allah blessed us to come to birth and it is in this house of worship, this classroom of God, that we learn of who we are and whose we are. Little did we know as black people in America that we have been chosen by God himself. All praise is due to Allah. And we would not know that unless God came himself to seek and to save us, the lost sheep, and to raise up one from among us in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank Allah for his beautiful, beautiful extension, their extension in our midst, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. We greet you again, brothers and sisters, and the greeting words of peace, assalamu alaikum. We just want to first welcome you and thank each of you on behalf of the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, and your nation, the nation of Islam. I'm going to say that again. Your nation, the nation of Islam. It is an honor to be a registered member in my own nation. And of course, as always, we are blessed to be broadcasting from this sacred and beautiful mosque right here in Chicago named Mosque Mariam, which is named after the beloved mother of Jesus. This house of worship, this classroom of God is dedicated to a particular purpose and mission. And that work and mission of the Mahdi and the Messiah is the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. That's what this is all about. The old world is going out with a bang. But a new world is on the rise and coming in. The nation of Islam, the nation of peace, the kingdom of God on earth. All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, we are so honored to be able to share with you a teaching that absolutely gives us life if we apply it in our lives. 
We are so honored to share with you the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that invincible truth. It cannot be defeated. It is an invincible truth that is composed of three powerful properties, life, light, and power. Today, brothers and sisters, we want to share with you the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that is guaranteed to change your life for the better. And all of us that are sitting here in suits and ties and bow ties, our beautiful sisters covering themselves, acknowledging the modesty that God demands of us, we have been affected by the life-giving teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I bear witness that I am still in the resurrection process, as all of us are, and I thank Allah for the day that I heard the life-giving teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I ain't never, ever, ever looking back again. All praises due to Allah. So as we bring up our next presenter, we are so excited about today's program. I just want to say one more word. Yesterday, we recognized and celebrated Allah's gift to not only the poor, all praises due to Allah, to not only the poor and suffering black men and women of America, but to all of humanity, a special man born May 11, 1933, the Honorable Minister. Louis Farrakhan, now 86 years young. This man, all praises due to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now 86 years young, this man and star of God among us has no equal in his compassion. He has no equal in the strength of his faith in the God that he serves. He has no equal in his commitment to uplifting and resurrecting his people. He has no equal in his sacrifice and love for our people. He has no equal in his work amongst the downtrodden, the suffering and the poor. No equal in his courage, as we heard on last Thursday at St. Sabina in his courage to speak the truth to power regardless of the consequences. He has no equal when it comes to integrity, character, righteousness, kindness, and no equal in providing perfect guidance and wisdom to us all. Allah has blessed us with a tremendous gift in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Today, brothers and sisters, we have a wonderful program for you. Please help me to receive to the rostrum at this time another student in the ministry class, student minister Abel Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Misericordioso, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I want to greet our brothers and our sisters here in Chicago at Mas Mariam or wherever you may be watching us across the country or across the planet this morning in the greeting words of peace, which we say in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum. And let me just start by thanking Allah for allowing me to see one more day. It's a little cold in Chicago today, but I felt warm this morning because I know that yesterday we were blessed with one more year of life for the most beautiful man I've ever seen with my physical eyes, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. And I went to the 86th chapter of the Holy Quran because he turned 86 years old. And it's a chapter called The Comer by Night. And this chapter starts with these words in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. By the heaven and the comer by night. And what will make thee know what the comer by night is? The star of piercing brightness. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was described by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a star without equal. He is a human being that the word that comes from his mouth 
and the love that emanates from his being cuts through whatever darkness, whatever dinginess, whatever sin, whatever wickedness may be around us in the atmosphere. But the love that he has within him from the Spirit of God is so intense that the truth that he speaks from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pierces through whatever veil of ignorance and darkness may be around you and I. We could come to him killers and he makes us lovers. We can come to him blind and he gives us sight. We can come to him deaf and he opens our ears. We can come to him dead and he gives us life from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Allah. All praise is due to Allah. So I too am anxious this morning because I want to hear from the West Coast Regional Representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. We used to call him Minister Tony. But today he's been given a name by the star that has no equal. So I want to hear today from Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad about God is rising. Because when we look in our community in the darkness, in the hell, in the abyss that our barrios and ghettos are in, what we know we need is not just more teaching. Because there are plenty of, plenty of teachings. We don't just need more politicians because we got lots of them. But what we need is the truth which will free you and I. And that's what we're going to receive this morning. But how can we have the truth except that God revealed the truth in a world of lies and deceit? And that's what we're going to receive from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad this morning. Are you ready for that kind of teaching? Well, please welcome to the rostrum to take us further into the program this morning, our wonderful sister in the ministry class here. Please welcome Sister Kenya Muhammad to the rostrum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you all in the greeting words of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. And to those observing a big Ramadan Mubarak. I first want to start by thanking my teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and his assistant minister, Brother Ishmael Muhammad, for allowing me the constant opportunity to share a few words on the program here at Mas Mariam whenever I am blessed to do so. I'm honored, brothers and sisters, to stand before you all as a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I want to say that I don't take this opportunity lightly because I know the struggle that we as women sometimes go through to have our voices not only heard but respected. And I thank Allah that in a time where black women we know are the most disrespected, are the most undervalued, are the most unprotected, we have been blessed with one to respect, to protect, to value, to represent, and fight for our reverence in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. He understands, brothers and sisters, the divine value of the woman and works to not only acquaint us with that value, but also encourage us to be living bearers of witness to the word and what it produces. And so I am so grateful to be a part of the MGT and GCC because the female voice in the Nation of Islam is not just something that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan tolerates. It's not just something that he permits, but he absolutely encourages it and almost demands that our voice be heard by the world. One day, brothers and sisters, it was on the 4th of July of last year, I was blessed to have a conversation with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And in that conversation, we were talking about uh, basically women presenting in Islam and, and speaking on the rostrum and different things like that. And in the conversation, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to me that we don't want the people to think that this is a male-dominated field. I'm going to say that again. He said, we don't want the people to think that this is a male-dominated field. And when he said that, I said to myself, wow, what manner of a man do we have as a leader in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? All praise is due to Allah. Because, you know, sometimes 
the religious leaders of the world want people to think it's a male-dominated field. They want it, and so they actively keep the men out front and women down below as if we have nothing to offer of substance to the faith that we claim and follow. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said one day, in some religious orders in Christianity, she is forbidden to come up on the rostrum or sit in the place where the pastor sits. He said, I said to my Christian family, if Mary, the mother of Jesus, entered the church, would you tell her that she could not come and stand on the rostrum and speak to her, us? He said, a woman so exalted and revered by Allah God. Then I turned and said to the pastor, would you tell your mother that she could not come up here? Now check this out. He said, the pastor quickly said to me, she could not come up here. He said, I was shocked. And me being under a man like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I was shocked when I heard that too. But he said it was then even more so why I, he said it was then that I realized even more so why there must be reform in our thinking concerning the female. He went on to say, dear and beloved Christians, it was a woman who attended the birth of Jesus. Yet Christianity does not begin at its birth. There were women who ministered unto Jesus, washing his feet comforting him and following him, yet Christianity does not begin with his ministry. But Christianity begins at a place called Calvary, where, according to the scripture, this Messiah was put to death. The minister says it was there at that time, at that place, that Christianity begins. And who was present at that place? He said most of his disciples had run away except John, and he was at a safe distance. But it was his mother Mary and another Mary who were at the foot of the cross when Jesus uttered the words, Woman, behold thy son. He said it was women at the tomb who saw that the tomb was empty and ran to tell the apostles that Jesus was risen. Now, brothers and sisters... Just as there were women around Jesus in every stage of his ministry, being followers of him and being bearers of witness to him and the truth that he brought, just as there were women during his birth, during his ministry, and even besides John, the only one that was there when he was put to death, just as the women were the ones to proclaim Jesus being alive after they witnessed an empty tomb, I am here to say proudly that there are women who stand with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, all praises due to Allah, willing to be bearers of witness to the transformative power of the word that he teaches. The women, brothers and sisters, who stand with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan understand the life found in the work and the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we know that it is worthy of obedience, representation, and defense. So while women are being stifled in the world, he taught us through the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that a woman can do anything that a man can do as long it does, as it does not degrade us. He taught us through the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that of course we are mothers to children and we have the unique ability to reproduce ourselves and our mates. But regardless of if we have born children yet, we are all mothers of civilization. We are the second selves of God. There is no higher honor, sisters, that we could have today but that. So all praises due to Allah. He... The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, while the world is bringing down the woman, taught us through the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that there is no such thing as a no good woman. I'm talking to you, sister, who in your mind right now may be thinking that that does not apply to you. There is no such thing as a no good woman. And the beauty of Islam and the nation of Islam is that no matter where we are right now, we have the power to transform our minds, our souls, and our bodies into vessels of God to bring in his kingdom of peace. All praise is due to Allah. And I thank you all. All praises due to Allah, and I thank you all for this moment, and I just have to end by saying that I am so grateful to be born a black woman, but I am even more grateful to have been born from a beautiful black Muslim woman by the name of Sister Michelle Muhammad. 
such a hard working, loving, and wonderful MGT and GCC. So, brothers and sisters, every time you see me doing anything of good, know that I am only a reflection of her hard work. And all of those who you see stand on the shoulders of hard working and beautiful MGT. All praises due to Allah. So, thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah, Allahu Akbar. Thank you, Sister Kenya. It is my deep honor to bring before you, he is no stranger to our mosque here, this beautiful brother whom we heard, of course, on Thursday. Man, did he represent and defend our beloved minister strong? We thank Allah for student minister Ishmael Muhammad. Help me to receive him with a warm round of applause, student minister Ishmael Muhammad. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, we give to Allah the one God, the wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth, the giver of life, the revealer of all truth, the sender of all the prophets. We give to him all of the honor, all of the praise, all of the glory. We could never thank him Dear brothers, sisters, enough for his many blessings, his goodness, his mercy. And this is why he deserves an expression of gratitude from every human being. The creatures that are less than the human being praise Allah. Think about that. They praise Allah. So every human being should at least, if you don't know any formal prayer from whatever faith you belong to, should we not wake up every morning and at least say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you wonderful creator. It is this month of Ramadan that the Muslims observe through fasting and prayer. And Allah gives us this month so that we may give thanks for having been given this life and all of the blessings that he has poured into our lives. Now, you may say, well, minister, I'm not blessed. Yes, you are. You're alive. That's a good and big enough blessing. You have some clothes. They may not be the finest of clothes, but you have something to cover your nakedness. You have your limbs. I mean, you cannot count the blessings of Allah. We are grateful to Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. We thank him for his coming. We thank him for his wise choice of one from black people to be his messenger, Messiah, and the man that he chose from black people in America is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We thank Allah, we thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for laying a foundation and for preparing one and giving to us their helper in this messianic 
work. The greatest helper that could ever be given to any prophet in the history of prophethood, the greatest helper that anyone that has some great work to accomplish could be given. This man that God has given to us, born on the 11th of May, yesterday was a special, special, special day in the history of the world. All praise is due to Allah. That day will soon be celebrated and observed by the whole of humanity. A son was given to both heaven and earth. When you read of the genealogy of Jesus, they give you how he was the seed of um, David from the house of Jesse. But he is declared the son of God according to the spirit. Isn't that something? And in the Quran, there are only two servants of Allah that were strengthened with the Holy Spirit of Allah. Jesus is one. And when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke of the minister from this very house, he said that the minister is full of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Just think about that. And we bear witness that he is full of the passion and the fire and the love of that Holy Spirit of Allah. I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, we have a very special guest with us. A brother that has been working for many, many years, helping the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We honor his work throughout the years, but in particular, the work that was just done in the city of Los Angeles, and all of the FOI and MGT of Los Angeles and the Western region that came out and demonstrated the love of God for our people in that community and what they did in service to the family and the community in the tragic loss of Nipsey Hussle. We have Minister Louis Farrakhan's student regional minister with us. He was, before the minister was in Los Angeles, known as Tony Muhammad. But Tony was put to rest. And now he is Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. What a beautiful name, servant of the master. Brother Abdul Malik is well known in Los Angeles, well known on the streets, well known among the different gangs or street organizations, working with the Bloods and the Crips to settle conflicts settle differences, bring about peace, working with the black and the brown. So we thank Allah for the work 
of Brother Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad, and he has a great message for us today. But before we bring him on, this is a day that I guess people who are ungrateful <laughs> have to be reminded that mother is so special. Mother is to be honored and respected every single day is Mother's Day. There's a song that goes, and uh, I'm not a singer. This is a man's world. This is a man's world. But what? It would be nothing without a woman or a girl. There would be no man without woman. Nothing that we see, it all came from the mind of a human being. And every human being has come from the sacred womb of the female. And that's why when the prophet was asked, who should we honor after Allah and his messenger? He said, your mother. And then he was asked on the second time, and after that, who should we honor? And the prophet answered, your mother. And the questioner asked again, and after that? And the prophet answered again three times, your mother. And then after that, as though that wasn't sufficient, the answer was your mother. <laughs> okay, your father. So three times is the value of mother because she labors and she suffers and she works with God in the shaping and the fashioning and the molding of the life in this womb, which is God's sacred house and his laboratory. And that's why, dear sister, once you know your divinity and line yourself back up with your real man. D did I say something wrong? Not taking anything. Don't get upset, brothers. But she is the woman of God, not the woman of man. So you go on, queen, and be the woman of God and help God and the Messiah to bring in a new heaven and a new earth. It's not going to come down from the sky or come from up beneath the earth. The new heaven and the new earth, it comes through the womb of the female. And that's why the prophet said, heaven lies at the foot of woman. Yeah. But let's give a big shout out to not only all the mothers, but a special mother. A special mother. Our first lady, yeah. Mother Khadija Farrakhan. Happy, happy Mother's Day every day, Mom. Every day. A grateful nation honors you for the sacrifices that you have made for your husband, for your family, and for your nation. I don't know about behind, behind every man is a great woman. I guess it means she's, she does her work quietly. She makes herself of no reputation. But the truth of the matter is, beside every great man is a great woman. All praise is due to Allah. Happy Mother's Day. So let's bring on this fireball from the western region. I mean, they've had plenty of fires out there and he is a ball of fire 
one of the sons of thunder. And we thank Allah for him and for taking time out of his schedule at the invitation of the Supreme Captain of the Nation of Islam and myself that he could be with us this weekend. Without further ado, will you help me to receive the student Western Regional Minister of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Student Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Mohammed. We are here to dedicate this time and moment to our great prince, a general. Let us stop all gang wars. Let us stop all black on black crime, brown on brown crime. This is the first time in the history of Los Angeles that we have stood up when a black man kill another black man. We are saying that crap is done. We will try to unite all the tribes so that we can finish out his legacy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We believe in freedom. Yes, we believe in equality of opportunity. We believe in justice. We want that justice apply equally to all, regardless to creed, class, or color. Long live the spirit of Brother Nipsey Hussle. All praise is due to Allah. In the name of Almighty God, to that one who is the creator of all things, and to him who is the revealer of all great and sacred truth. Dear brothers and sisters, I don't care how old any of us get to be. In this world's life, there is not one of us who could thank Almighty God Allah enough for the many servants that he have sent to be a warner to man to bring us back to the right course of God. Let us today thank him for Abraham, let us thank him for Moses. Let us thank him for that perfect reflection that God can dwell in man by giving us Jesus Christ. Let us thank him for Muhammad, for that great man came with the right religion that is in the very nature of the original man and woman of the planet Earth. That man is Prophet Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon these great and worthy servants of his. But oh, Chicago, I, I came to bring you some good news. Some of you look like you can use some good news in a world full of bad news. For this book, the Quran tells us, take good news to the believers. I came to Chicago to tell you that Almighty God Allah have not forsaken you. As I asked the preachers in Los Angeles, did not God and the prophets see black people, brown people, and the Native American coming into bondage. And many of them in their practice voice would say, yes, God knows everything. I said, then show me in scripture where God saw us coming into bondage. Well, I'm here to tell you, Chicago, that God loves us so much so that he is fulfilling that part of scripture where it is written in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5 where God says this day has thou prepared a body that I may enter. 
I know, I know, some of y'all looking crazy now. Look at us. The white man have told you that God is a nothingness. That God does not exist. I'm here to tell you that that is a lie. Huh? God is a man. I'm going to say it again. God is a man. If he is not a man, how could he say, come on, let us make man? How you going to make him, God? See, here's what discredits and removes the lie of our open enemy. How you going to make him, God? In our image. Wait a minute. White people told me you didn't have an image. Huh? And after our likeness, the Holy Quran says it a little different that God would take that first man, Adam, out of black mud, fashion into shape. And then God would breathe into Adam of his inspiration. Well, if God breathed into Adam of his inspiration, since he's the architect, the seamstress of Adam's body, Huh? Then God breathed into him of his aspiration or inspiration. Then Adam became a living soul. In fact, Adam became God. I'm here to bring you some good news, Chicago. A man came. As Jesus said he would come. A man came from the east to the west. Seeking to find a people lost. Here we are. We lost in Chicago, is that right? He came in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. I want to tell you his name. His name is Master Far Muhammad. Oh, he came, brothers and sisters. All praise is due to Allah. I don't know about you. I'm happy that somebody came for the black man. Huh? Everybody in the Bible that was in bondage, they got somebody. So I asked God, man, when will somebody come for us? He came. And in Deuteronomy, God talking to Moses and telling Moses about another people going into bondage. And God said to Moses, I'm going to send them one like you, Moses. Huh? When in order for God to send one like Moses, there have to be a people like the children of Israel. Then God say, and when I find them, I'm going to raise one from among them. I hope y'all ready for this. Huh? When that man, Master Farad Muhammad, found us, he found one from among us. Oh, I don't know about you. I'm glad that I have a God that looked like me, huh? That came up like me. Everybody got a deity that looked like them. We're the only people that have a deity that looked like our oppressor. So he raised from us a Georgia-born black man by the name of the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he taught him night and day. He pulled him from a junk pile made by white people called niggers. Oh, oh, look at y'all. Hmm? That man, Master Farid Muhammad, it was written of him that he would be in the heart of the earth for three and one half years. And he taught Elijah Muhammad and he became the first begotten of the dead. Polished him up and then he turned him back to that junk pile. So, all right, Elijah, go pluck these niggas. Huh? Go polish him up. Oh, and that little Georgia-born black man started teaching the dry bones, and from them bones stood an exceedingly great army. I don't know about you, but I love my Elijah. All praises due to Allah. Huh? Oh, man, but we got a trinity, too. 
we got a trinity too. That Elijah studied under the master teacher God in person. And God used the mind of the honorable Elijah Muhammad like a man would use the womb of a woman to bring forth a child. Huh? His mind became a sheep. Huh? And from the mind of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, he produced a son. Huh? So that we, the Muslims, could say, for unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And he would rule with a rod of iron. I don't know about you, but I love me some Farrakhan, man. Huh? Oh, that man, Farrakhan. Huh? I love it that when his name is mentioned, just like in the movie The Lion King, huh? when Mufasa is mentioned, huh? it makes all the other animals punk out. So when Farrakhan's name is mentioned, our enemies start punking out. Oh, thank you, Brother Farrakhan. What a man. We've been looking for a leader like this all our life. He's not just our father, but he's a mother too. Thank you, Brother Farrakhan, for finding a wretch like me. I know what that song means, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. That say what? A wretch like me. I once was lost in white folks. But now I'm found blind and I can somewhat see. So in their holy and righteous names, let me greet you, my family, in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan Mubarak, dear family. Oh, man. Chicago. The Mecca of a whole new world. I want to thank, from the bottom of my heart, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I don't have enough breath in my body for what you've done for me. I want to thank you, Brother Minister, for being the kind of man who looked past our faults. Huh? I want to thank you, Brother Minister, for the many times I came to you with the spirit to quit. And you knew how to call on the God and me, and he would say, brother, you punking out? Well, I couldn't be no punk in front of my leader. I want to thank you for the many times that I've tried to confess my faults, and you would listen, and when I'm finished, you would just wipe them away and say, you finish? Huh? I want to thank you for not being like most people who always want to settle on the worst part of each other. You never do that. You always talk around our condition and you speak to our soul and our spirit to bring the best out of us. Thank you, Brother Minister. Thank you for using mathematics and science and you know how to pour your spirit that is the spirit of God that touched the spirit of God in everyone you meet. Thank you, brother minister. Thank you for allowing me to serve and to make mistakes and to practice on this post. Thank you for the times that in LA, even when I fail, you didn't throw me away. Thank you for your investment in me and all of the ministers in the nation of Islam, man. I do not 
feel worthy to serve, but I thank you. And I pray to Allah that he gives me a double portion of your spirit so that this enemy know that we are Farrakhan, man. You can't kill a Farrakhan, not, not that man. Too many of us love him. Huh? How you going to get Farrakhan and you didn't get Minister Ishmael? How you going to get Farrakhan and you didn't get Brother Hafiz in New York? First of all, how you going to get Farrakhan and you didn't get Mustafa? Thank you, Brother Minister. I'm here once again to close ranks in the nation of Islam. I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. This brother that is our national assistant, the way he defended our minister at St. Sabina, good God Almighty, brother, he touched my soul just in him introducing our leader. Huh? and made me to know that God has blessed Minister Ishmael with a gift. And I thank God for him. I love him with all my heart because I don't want inside of the nation that what happened to Brother Nipsey to happen inside of the nation of Islam. It was envy that got Nipsey hustled, murdered because he rose above his hood and above the condition. But that envy is inside of the nation and I'm here to say to the enemy and to the hypocrites, you can go to hell. Straight to hell. That I want to be a part of the body of Christ. I don't care which part of the body. Huh? In fact, I'd rather be the feet. Everybody trying to be close to the head, let me be the feet. And in that body of Christ, you have to love every part because each part have an important role to play in the body of Christ. So when the ministers of the nation of Islam and the captains of the nation of Islam. Boy, when we close ranks, it's going to be impossible when the leader goes to the wheel, it's going to be impossible for them to deal with us if we got the body intact. Huh? I'm here to say, I admire the talent that's in you, Brother Ishmael. I admire it. God has made you special. I admire our brother in New York, Brother Hafiz Muhammad, man. I admire him. I admire our brother Abdul Sharif in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh my God, I admire him and his work. I admire our brother in Miami, Brother Patrick Muhammad, all the regional ministers. I admire Brother Abdul Halim and Brother Hakeem over in London. Brother Rashidullah up in San Francisco. See, just the body of Christ. For the minister said, brother, study the brother that murdered Nipsey Hussle that we may kill the envy and the jealousy inside of the nation. I'm not here to window dress. I'm not here to prove that I'm better than nobody. All I want to do is serve because the best among you is he or she who serves. I just want to be the feet, Brother Supreme. Why you want to be the feet? Huh? Because the feet is that which is closest to the ground, where all the dirt is. 
Oh, but that feet play an important role when the body say kick the crack, I mean kick the enemy. Because when the head say kick the enemy, I'm not gonna hesitate. So I thank Allah for the brotherhood and the sisterhood of the nation of Islam. There can be no mass banging in the nation of Islam. I'm going to say that again. I'm from Chicago. I'm from New York. No, brother. I'm in the nation. And everywhere I go, I'm in the nation. What group you know you can belong to that when my beautiful wife and I flew here, I got picked up by FOI from the Nation of Islam, driven to our hotel, and the way Minister Ishmael and, Minister, and Brother Mustafa took care of my wife and I, it brought tears to our eyes. I said, what other nation do this for black people? Huh? One nation of Islam. New York is not better than L.A. L.A. ain't better than New York. Stop all that crap. Let me calm down. May I bring you some more good news? Thank you, dear brother. My subject today comes out of a beautiful experience that Allah used us in Los Angeles in a way that has created one of the greatest miracles I have ever seen. This young brother Ermius Oscadon, known as Nipsey Hussle. Before I go into that, let me too thank every mother that is here today. I want to start off with thanking the Mary, Sister Maria, that produced a man who's become God Almighty. Let us thank the mother of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Sister Maria Muhammad, for producing for us a savior. I want to thank the womb that bore this man who has given his all to this great nation of Islam. Let us thank Sister Samaya, the mother of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let us thank Allah. Come on, brothers and sisters, you can show your love. And I want to personally thank the woman that it took me a long time to realize my relationship with my mother. It was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that helped me to see my mother in a different light. My mother had 10 children, no man. We grew up in the 60s. My mother was abused by the three fathers. 
And ever since I was one or two years old, we fighting these men that's beating my mother. And my mother became an alcoholic. And my mother not knowing how to rear children. I would remember at six years old, my mother would be up under this white Jesus praying to him because we were so poor and she would be praying and crying out to this white Jesus and I would be watching in the background praying to him for help and I would say mommy I'm your help and she would turn around and backhand me up against the wall and she would say you ain't nothing But I long to help her because of her cry. And every time she would cry, I would go to her and tell her, I'm here to help you. And when she was drunk, she would beat me. And my sisters used to hide me because when my mother would get drunk, she would start looking for me. And my sisters would hide me on the porch or under the house and feed me through the screen doors until my mother would go to sleep. But in my prayers, under those covers, I would pray to God, please bless her to allow me to help her. Little did I know that all that I was going through was the material to prepare me to meet the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Huh? So I started associating every time I wanted to get my mother's attention, I would get good grades and bring them home and she would tear up my report card. I would get trophies and bring my trophies home because I was good in sports. And when she get drunk, she'd break my trophies and she would say, you think you better. So now winning became associated with pain. And so what had developed in me, I would try to shrink. I didn't like the win anymore. Huh? Y'all all right? <laughs> so it wasn't until I came in the nation of Islam and I heard Minister Farrakhan talk about the circumstances of his birth. And it made me go back and re-examine that this white man, everything that they had did to our people caused my mother to be one of the lost found, one of the ones in ignorance. And it was him who got me to look at her different. So I thank her because I longed to help. And now I've become a great helper in the nation of Islam because of that longing. So I thank God for my mother. And I don't care what we go through. You can look at it negatively, brother. I refuse to. My mother was a great woman because even with 10 children, she never abandoned us. She never threw us away. She worked through it, man. And I thank God for her. And lastly, I thank God for my wife. She's with me today, Sister Malika. Thank you, baby. <laughs> oh, y'all can do better. Give my baby a standing ovation. <laughs> thank you. She helped me to heal some of my wounds. She was patient with me. She never judged me. And I would ask her, why, why, do you, why are you hanging with a fool like me? And just like the minister, she said, I don't know, it's just something about you. 
Thank you for hanging in there with me 40 years. Now, brothers and sisters, in my humble opinion, I did not know that the Jesus that the whole world had been waiting for would come from among us. I, some of you are looking perplexed. But I want you to re-examine what you know about Jesus, and I want you to parallel that, that this man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, in my opinion, is walking in the perfect footsteps of Jesus. <laughs> and that when Brother Nipsey was murdered, isn't it interesting that he was 33 years old? I did not know that this brother had transcended hoods, and I'll tell you more about that. But his name, Ermius, means God will rise. Now, here we are, a people brought into slavery, we lost our name, our language, our culture, our God. Here we are a people who are in need of resurrection. Hey, brother, if you would go to the next slide. This picture, in my opinion, sort of simplifies what this Caucasian have done to us since we've landed on the shores of North America. The whole Christian faith is based on the resurrection of the dead. And even in the Holy Quran, the devil told God in the seventh surah of the Holy Quran in the elevated places, when Adam was created out of that black mud, and fashioned into shape, and then God told the angels, bow down. All of the angels bowed down except who? Eblitz. What was the attitude of Eblitz? His attitude is just like some of ours. He said, I'm better. See, the moment you start thinking you are better than somebody, you have entered into the spirit of Eblitz. Eblitz said, I'm made of fire, and you want me to bow down to this black man made of mud? And if you look at Caucasian people, that is their attitudes. They think that they are better. Come on now, talk back to me. Then God said to him, then he told this Eblitz, the devil. He found him in error and he said, then I'm going to banish you, so to speak. But look at what Eblitz said when God ran him from the face of God. Eblitz turned back to God. He said, respite me then until the day when they are raised. Huh? Then God said to Eblitz, surely you are of the respited ones. Then Eblitz said, all right, then you're going to leave me with these black people, huh? Look at what he said to God. I'm going to tear them up. I'm going to turn them inside out, upside down. I'm going to come from before them and from behind them. I'm going to come up from their left and from their right. I'm going to decimate them so much so that when you do show up, they will not even recognize you. Y'all all right? 
In the 1700s, the 1600s, and the 1500s, they put us in chain. They hung us. And now they are shooting us down. So look at what the book of Genesis say. Genesis chapter 15. God talking to Abraham. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, Abram, that your seed will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for what? Come on, class, talk black to me. How long? Have we been here for 400 years? Have we served them? Have they afflicted us? Look at that brother in that picture standing before slave owners to be sold to some slave plantation. Is that still going on today? How is it happening today? Gang members, the youth are standing in a courtroom just like that, waiting to go to whatever state prison that they will be sent to for free labor. Did they afflict us? I'm showing you these pictures because I want you to see what I'm saying. Look at verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy father in peace. And thou shalt be buried in a good old age. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that there's not going to be no physical resurrection but we're in need of mental resurrection in order to understand the resurrection of the dead you got to understand how can you die there are three levels of death you can die spiritually how do you die spiritually when a man disconnect you from the true and living God did you get disconnected? How can you die mentally when a man changed your name? When a man changed your language? When a man changed your culture? We are the only ethnic group in America that only speaks English. Go to the next slide. And this is why we was asked the question, who is the original man? In this slide, in the book of Deuteronomy, look at what it reads. For they will turn away thy sons from following me, that they may serve other gods. Did we get turned? Let me ask you a question, black Chicago. What was your religion before the white man changed it? Many of our ancestors were Muslims, but the founding fathers of this country said to their predecessors, whatever you do to the black man, don't allow them two things, for if they get these two things back, they would become trouble. And this is why they reduced us to three-fifths of a human being. And that was, do not allow them to study that religion, Islam and do not allow them to study their history. Look at the pictures. The original man. When we came to America, Africa was on our mind. Africa was our home. We had our own names, Kunta, Bakari, Nala, Kwame, Shabazz. We had our own religion, Yoruba, Islam, animism. We had our own culture. We had our own language. But then they downloaded this virus into our head that's in red. It's a virus, it's a germ. And then they put a picture of a Caucasian man and downloaded Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, changed our names to Johnson, Williams, Culpepper. We went to speak in English. Huh? That's a virus. Y'all all right? 
Yeah, it's, it's something. Next slide. So when we were asked the question, who is the original man? That once a man changed your name, changed your religion, and you start thinking on what he gave you, your thoughts produced a new man. So the original man of Africa fell away, and the white man produced a Negro, a coon, and a nigger. Then he afflicted us. Look at some of the pictures. And I'm going to show you the importance of Nipsey Hussle and what happened in L.A. Look at some of the pictures that prior to 75, this is just a few years ago. This young brother, I think he was around 14 years old. Look at the faces of those devils. Do you see anybody feeling sorry for this black man? They burned him alive, brothers and sisters. I want to etch this into your mind because one thing I love about our Jewish brethren, they refuse to let their children not know what happened to them in their Holocaust. They show them the pictures of them being burned in oven. So I want to burn this in your mind. Some of these Caucasian people may be still alive. I wish I could find a couple of them. Go to the next picture. What did he do? And they shall afflict them for how many years? I'm showing you this pain. Because it's out of this pain that produces a savior. And to the degree that we suffered, whoever is going to lead us is going to have to lead us with all of this pain wrapped up in their soul and in their spirit. So when the enemy comes at him, he will not bend because he's here to settle the score, man. This is the pain that produced Master Fahd Muhammad. It produced the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It brought out Louis Farrakhan. They were born out of this pain. It wasn't just brothers. Go to the next slide. This was in Alabama. This is a sister and her son. What did they do to deserve this? Look at them crackers standing on the bridge, hung this mother and her son. They have always hated us. Don't you believe your 400 year old enemy all of a sudden loves you now? Because they done learned how to pat you on your back. Y'all all right? Yes, just, 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 just look at it for a minute. We will never forget. This is what produced in Deuteronomy. Here is the man that showed up. This man, Master Fard Muhammad, this beautiful human being, God in person, he showed up and he raised from the South a Southern black man who had embodied the pain of his people. So look at what God says in Deuteronomy. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, Moses and put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And that Elijah Muhammad only had a fourth grade education. Huh? He became the first begotten of the dead and so the scriptures, they found him when they said, how is this man who's not lettered learn? The white man never said Elijah Muhammad tell lies. 
They never say Louis Farrakhan tell lies. They just say, you better not follow that man. That man will get you killed. Huh? I will raise you up one from among them. See, you and I are supposed to be looking for a leader like Moses. But Harvard wasn't going to produce your Moses. Yale was not going to produce your Moses. God, that man, Master Farad Muhammad, who came from the East, taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad night and day. I'm sorry, Morehouse wasn't going to produce your leader. I love Morehouse, but Morehouse got a problem. They may only be producing other than Brother Burvey and a few others that's in the nation, but Morehouse, most of the time, is only producing Morehouse niggas. And they got another problem. Same thing with Marsh Brown, Tuskegee. They got black college, but they don't have black knowledge. Oh, Elijah Muhammad was so wise that from his mind, look at what he produced. From the womb of a mother, the honorable Elijah Muhammad represented a virgin people a virgin people who had not had a divine rendezvous with God, so God put the seed of his love in the mind of the honorable Elijah Muhammad and he cracked Farrakhan. And he filled the minister with his spirit and the minister studied him night and day and he became Elijah himself. So the minister fulfills this part of scripture in the book of St. John. You never hear the minister teaching without mentioning his teacher. He always give the credit to the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He has lifted the honorable Elijah Muhammad so high that God has lifted him too. The scripture reads, how be it when he the spirit of truth is come. He shall guide you into all truth, for he shall speak of him. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The minister have always been like that. Huh? Everything he has told me in L.A., his guidance, man, as long as I follow it, I win, but when I don't follow his guidance, I lose. And I'm gonna be honest, I've lost a couple of times. When he sent me to LA 25 years ago, I'm from Georgia. He sent a country boy to the West Coast. I mean, a Beverly Hillbillies type dude. Me and my family going down Sunset Boulevard like the Beverly Hillbillies. He said, brother, don't let me catch you in Hollywood. And I lied. I said, yes, sir. But I had to be honest. I snuck in Hollywood a couple of times. No, he said, brother, win the streets. He said, if you win the streets and you follow me, keep your eye on me. And when you win the streets, Hollywood will come. But don't go to Hollywood, go to the streets. That's his advice to me, and I have to be honest. I think Allah is blessing me to do just that. Now I want to show you some attitudes of our government. Our government, do you know that in scripture, every time a people is in bondage, do you know, sisters, that you are so special? 
that whenever God want to give a gift to a people that's in bondage, he always touches the female that's in the hood. The scripture say, can any good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth 2,000 years ago was like the project is today. God would always touch the womb of a woman and the wicked who would put people in bondage, they knew God existed too. And they would always watch the oppressed because they were always waiting on some boy child to be born that would put an end to their rule. Y'all all right? America is no different. This man, J. Edgar Hoover, let's, let's see what he feared. Do you know that J. Edgar Hoover was a wise man? He knew scripture. Look at what J. Edgar Hoover said. He feared what? The rise of a what? That's the FBI. Do they still have that spirit? They feared the rise of a what? Let's go to the next slide and get it even more perfectly. When J. Edgar Hoover was asked the question, what is the number one threat to the United States of America? Look at what he said. Negro unity. Black Chicago, y'all hear me? What is the number one threat to the United States of America? Negro unity. He didn't stop there. Go to the next slide. This was in the 60s. The wickedly wise been waiting. They've been watching us to see who is the Messiah because they knew that the Messiah was going to come up out of an ignorant people. We didn't know it. This is why the scripture said, I went to my own and my own received me now. Huh? I spoke truth into the darkness of their mind, but we ain't never comprehending no black leader because we suffer from the white God syndrome. Look at what COINTERAPRO writes. What interest could an intelligence agency have in a man? This is when they were watching King, who plainly believed only in peace. In August 1967, four months after King called the U.S. government the, great, the, great, the greatest purveyors of violence in the world today. King said that. Three months after, 30 members of the Black Panther Party marched armed into the California state capitol. And they marched onto the front pages of newspaper. And J. Edgar Hoover, after he heard of America's domestic, if you heard of this domestic law enforcement, it was under COINTELPRO. Well, the purpose of COINTELPRO was this. They wanted to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activists or activities of black nationalists, hate-type organizations, and groupings. And they wanted to minimize the power of those in leadership. Go to the next slide. In the next slide, they talk about who are these hate type groups. Hoover explained that when he say hate type groups, he meant the nonviolent student coordinating committee, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. So you thought the Nation of Islam was the only hate group. They said that the SCLC was a hate group. They said that the Congress of Racial Equality was a hate group. And the Nation of Islam 
groups like Malcolm X. Then they went on to name even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a hate group. This is what's been in the minds of white people in power in America since we've been here. So they feared what? Come on, classroom. They feared what? They feared Negro unity. Now I want to show you something. I want to show you what happened in Los Angeles. They was looking for the Messiah. They murdered Dr. King. They missed the Messiah. The Messiah is in their midst right now. The Messiah is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. They missed him and I'm gonna prove to you by the grace of God from my vantage point why he is the Messiah. When Nipsey Hussle was murdered, that brother was 33 years old. Nipsey Hussle had transcended all the hoods in Los Angeles. We didn't even know it. I did not know him, but when I met him, it was in 2014. In 2005, I was protesting a police slaying of a young black boy in Los Angeles. And in the rolling 60s neighborhood, there was a murder that every time there's a murder in Los Angeles, I go to the scene, brothers and sisters. I've been doing it for 25 years. If I hear about it, I go. And when I get to the scene, I've embraced mothers with blood still on their garments from holding their boys who was murdered and they would see us and they would run and hug me. Minister Tony, please stop them from killing each other. This is what I've been hearing for 25 years. But I showed up to a prayer vigil in the rolling 60s neighborhood. Me and some FOI and the police pulled up from out of nowhere. And I stepped off the sidewalk because LAPD in 2005 almost hit one of the participants. And when I stepped off the sidewalk, I said, officers, everything all right? He gets out of the car. He said, get your back. Let me shorten the story. Once he said that, I said, officer, I'm Minister Tony Muhammad with the Nation of Islam, he said, I don't give a damn who you are. I'm going to ask you one more time. You get back. So I take a step back. I said, officer, would you get your watch, commander, because I was a part of the LAPD clergy council. He refused, so I called the chief myself. And the chief said, turn and get his badge number. And when I went to get his badge number, he pepper sprayed me and some of the brothers and the brothers beat the hell out of that LAPD. <laughs> All praises due to Allah. That's exactly what we hollered. We said, Allahu Akbar. We took, we took their weapons. We took their radio and their badge. That's how we train, brothers. We don't carry no weapons, but if it be Allah's will, when you come at us with one, we will take it from you by Allah's grace. That's love. So when they handcuffed me and the brothers, the police jacked me up and threw me to the ground and I hit the ground face down cracking most of my teeth. 
And the rolling 60s, the gang members started throwing rocks at the police. I did not know that Nipsey Hussle was a young teenager and he was one of the ones throwing rocks at LAPD. Nipsey. I didn't find this out until 2014. And in 2014, he was, we were honoring Trayvon Martin's mother. And Nipsey Hussle was in the meeting. And when I walked in, he snatched the mic. He said, at that time, he said, there's Minister Tony. Then he started telling about the story in the rolling 60s neighborhood when I was praying over one of his dead homies. He talked about why they respected the nation and why they respected my leadership. I did not know this. I'm like, man, this brother was there? Then when the event was over, Nipsey Hussle came to me and said, brother, may I have a picture with you? I said, are you kidding? I want a picture with you. <laughs> See, brothers, FOI. We don't even realize that when we're doing our work, you may not realize it, but the stars are not the stars. Not in the eye of God. We are the real stars because our people depend on us being out in the community, out among them. Huh? They not going to tell you they love you, but they glad you there. They hard. They can't act like they like you. They blood and crippling it. They ain't gonna say I love you. You know, when the streets like you, you'll be good if you get one of these. That's it. That man just expressed love to you like you never seen. And they don't smile. It's like this. Now they smile at y'all. Y'all all right? And these are the words he said to me. He said, brother, I want you to know, Minister Muhammad, I respect you. And he thanked me for nearly giving my life for their hood. And I said, brother, it wasn't just for your hood. I said, I'm blood and cuz. And I ain't going to let you differentiate me from nobody. And now that I'm in Chicago, I'm an L rookin. I'm a Latin king. I'm a folk counter gangster. Hey man, whatever you are, I'll meet you there. See, brother, that's what we have. We have to meet them where they are. We can't go in there being above the hood. You meet the hood where they are. That's what the ministers say. Go to them. Sometimes I go by myself. The brothers playing dominoes and I go play dominoes with them just to get their attention. That's right. so, hey, nigga, what you got? What you got? <laughs> and then as I'm playing dominoes, I'm like, hey, man, y'all know what them crackers about to do, right? <laughs> no, brother Muhammad, what they about to do? Check this out. Then dominoes is over. But dominoes was the bait that I got to their head. I go in the Watts and we're walking through Watts. Brother would be cutting hair outdoors. I get in his barber's chair. So as he cutting my head, I'm teaching his. Nipsey said, brother, I want you to know that my father used to put me and my brother in the car. And he would bring us to the corner of Crenshaw and Slauson and make us watch the FOI sell papers and pies. And he would turn to us and say, now that's discipline. That's how you get your grind on. And that's why he made a song about grinding all my life. Huh? He said, brother, minister, he said, I need help. Would you minister to me? I said, brother, I'm obligated to minister to you. And we exchanged numbers. And since 2014, 
maybe two, three, maybe sometimes four times a year, he'd call me. And he was having problems, problems in his hood because they got hood politics. And he was asking me, how, man, do I do what I do and help the homies? And I would say, brother, use your time and your talent. I would give him what the minister gave me. That's all I knew. I said, don't ever leave your hood. Don't ever make them think you better than them. Go serve them, brother. I would just drop little tidbits. Then he said to me, and I didn't know, he said, oh, I also do music with your son. I'm like, what? I said, no wonder my, my son be so high. <laughs> it's you he hanging out with. Oh, come on, get off it, brother. Yeah, our children, some of our children get high. But God got our children on a mission. Don't judge your children in the nation. They're going to be all right. You stop panicking. I went to the minister one time about my son crying. He said, brother, leave him alone. Because sometimes you beating him with Islam. And he's looking at your hypocrisy. Come on now, our children know when we're at home, we ain't got them headpieces on. My son saw aspects of my hypocrisy. Oh, it got quiet up in here. And the minister said, no, brother, he's going to be all right. He's got enough Islam in him, you'll see. Leave him alone. And when he returns, he'll be like the prodigal son. And when he start coming back, just go kiss his neck and break out a fatty cabbage. Little did I know my son was in the studios influencing the artists. And when T.I. said, when he met Nipsey, Nipsey was the only rapper to give him a book. And when the people asked Nipsey, what book was it? He said, message to the black man. This book right here. Oh, you ain't got this book? Wherever you at around the world, you better get this book. Brother Fontaine, look, I've been inboxed from brothers from Yemen, Palestine, we got to get this in Chinese. We got to get this book in Japanese. Now, this book is a message to the black man, and black is not a color. It is the essence from which all color comes from. Every human being got to have a message to the black man. Let, let me just put it right there. Every human being should have this on their shelf. So T.I., we can't even keep this book. I did not know it was my son that influenced Nipsey to get this book because my son, unbeknownst to me, stole my books. I guess I wasn't reading them. And he said, no, Dad, I'm in the studio. They all would watch me read, and then that's how I create. So my son is on a song called Picture Me Rolling. You'll hear him singing on that. I did not know all of this was happening. And when Nipsey was murdered, listen at this. His security, along with his wife, Sister Lauren London, she came to me. And his security he said, Minister, I want to tell you something about Nipsey. He stopped looking at TV three years ago, at number three. And he would only watch documentaries. Then he said there was only three people he would listen to lecture. Number one, they told me he listened to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. 
They said number two, he would sometime listen to T.D. Jakes. And then three, they said he would listen to the series that I used to lecture in L.A. He said he did that religiously. Nipsey. Then we found out, y'all ready for this? That Nipsey, two weeks before he was murdered, Nipsey Hussle. This is why his music, his album is called The Victory Lap. Well, that's in the Holy Quran called The Victory. And when you go into Surah 48, it deals with the Hudabaya truce. That's when all the tribes came together to form a truce. So little did Nipsey Hussle know that he was being used by God to bring the hoods together all over America. Y'all all right? His brother verified to us when Nipsey, two weeks before he was murdered, he put on hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry. Mm. He went to over 25 neighborhoods, brothers and sisters. He got on the bus. He did the unthinkable. He went to his mortal enemies. He got off the bus with all of his juries and said to the homies, either you're going to kill me or we're going to stop the beefing. Did you hear what I just said? The hoods were so dumbfounded that they started calling his own hood. Say, hey man, your homie is over here offering his life if we stop the beefing. Nipsey. Nipsey wanted to end all the gang wars. Nipsey was, he was producing an album. Him and my son were producing an album for the 25,000 mothers who lost their children to gang violence in L.A. Oh, Nipsey. He went to 25 neighborhoods, but it was his own hood that murdered him. And when they murdered him, my son and I, when we heard about it, we jumped in the car and on my way, I'm getting a call from all of their rival gangs telling me, Brother Muhammad, let the homies know we didn't have nothing to do with that. Because one thing about L.A. gangs, when they kill you, they own it. So I'm on my way. I said, all right, homie, when I get there, I'll, I'll let them know. We didn't know. I'm thinking one of their mortal enemies. And the rolling 60s, it's the second largest black gang in L.A. When I get to the scene, I pull a big U to the side. I said, brother, I want you to know on my way I got a call and I named the hoods. He said, we know it wasn't nobody from the outside. It was one of our own. They were so numb because... They couldn't go on a war path. And the next day, so many people came to pay their respects to Nipsey. Tens of thousands came out and we had a prayer vigil. And at that prayer vigil, when I got there, the pastors ran up to me because the gang members pulled their gun out on the pastors and wouldn't let them talk. Because all the cameras was there. So all the big preachers in L.A. showed up to pray and the gang members told them no. So when I showed up, the preachers came to me saying, Brother Mohammed, they, they won't let us speak. They won't let us pray. I said, hold on, pastors. I said, I'll ask them if they will let you pray. I said, but before I do that, let's make a pact right now. I said, I want you all to agree with me that we, the religious leaders, will stop the religious gang banging.
and the eight pastors that was there put their hand on top of mine and said, that's on. And then when I walked in, I asked the gang members, would they let them in? And they let them in. It was on a Monday. And then after the prayer vigil, everything was peaceful. So I had to go to FOI class. So the brothers, we went to FOI class. We left just a few brothers there. I'm in class an hour and a half later, all hell breaks loose at ground zero. I get a call, oh my God, they're shooting, they're stabbing, which all was a lie. People was falling on glass and it was the police beating the hell out of our people. So I get a call and guess who it's from? The mayor of Los Angeles and the chief of police call Brother Tony Muhammad. They said these words to me, the mayor, Eric Garcetti. He said, Minister Muhammad, we need your help. I'm like, what the hell? I put him on speakerphone because I couldn't believe it. He said, Brother Muhammad, we need your help. We need you and the nation to go back. You all are the only ones that they trust. He, as God is my witness, he said, I'm asking you in the name of the city, would you help me? I have the chief of police. And I said, Mayor, I'm obligated. We were headed back anyway. I said, but I ask you one thing, Mayor. We will go and make an assessment and we may need barriers. We may need things to help us. Would the police kind of give us aid? Now, we don't need you touching our people. We'll do that part. But I need cooperation from the LAPD. And the chief said, Minister Muhammad, this is the chief. And I give you my word that we will take the lead from the nation of Islam. That's, that's big. I was dumbfounded. I was like, what the hell? Here we are supposed to be a hate group and they call in the hate group to keep the peace. <laughs> Look. So he said, we'll follow your lead. Whatever you ask us to do, sir, we'll follow your lead. I couldn't believe it. I get brother Captain Halim. I said, brother, line the brothers up. And when we went back to ground zero, it was hundreds of riot cops. And y'all know there for why we get that Allah swag in us. Huh? We start calling on the guard. We drilling a block away. The people could hear us coming. Whose soldiers are we? Whose soldiers are we? We marching into the scene. Boy, I'm telling you, I wish you were there, brother and sister. And as we coming up on the scene, black people was cheering like, that's our police. And when we get to the police, they all hard, but they had to open up for the nation and let us in on a crime scene. And I said to the mayor, after we make our assessment, would you go before the press and tell the press you ask for the help of the nation of Islam? I wanted him to do that because I wanted that to be a punch in the face of our Jewish haters. I wanted the world to know that they asked the nation to go keep the peace. And the next day in a press conference, the mayor and the chief of police said, we asked for the help of Minister Tony Muhammad and the nation of Islam. The press was like, what? I'm about to close with this. It, it, was, it, it was just, when we went back to the scene, it was the FOI and the police. I couldn't believe it. They was doing everything we asked. The homie was saying, damn, cuz. 
You know, I've been around them so much, man. Say, wait a minute, huh? cuz, they did what y'all say do? You know, and I kind of, you know, I kind of, kind of tested. I said, sir, come here. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother minister, I had to show out a bit. You know, after they done whooped up on me. Come here, sir. I need you to do this. I need, y yes, sir. You run and go get it done. Let me tell you, when we took over that scene, not even an argument for a whole week broke out on that scene. Our leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he was so touched by the brother's murder that our leader, he sent in weapons for us to use, but our weapon was the final call newspaper. Oh, my God. Boy, them bullets was coming in. He had that picture or a picture like that on the front page. 150,000 newspaper and Brother Fontaine came with the paper and our people was taking that paper, crying. And when Nipsey Hussle's mother and grandmother saw that picture, the grandmother hugged the picture and said, Thank Minister Farrakhan. He loves my grandson. I'm crying. I'm like, look at this man from Chicago. Pouring love into L.A. And the minister wouldn't come. Then the gang members started calling for Louis Farrakhan. He said, no, brother, I'm not coming unless the family want me. And when I went and met with the mother, the mother said, are you kidding me? His brother, Black Sam, I can't say you what he said. He said, man, we elf with him. <laughs> no, that's big in the streets, brother. When the streets say they elf with you. <laughs> we elf with him. See, brother, y'all been in the Mars too damn long, you know. <laughs> you better get out in that street, man, and learn what's happening. See, you'll get offended. Hey, man, we up with you. You be like me. What? No, nah, it's a love thing, brother. In fact, Live Nation, who was helping to plan the, the funeral, Wanted to fight against it. And Black Sam, Nipsey brothers, said, man, not him. You ain't take, you'll take everybody else off but him. That's L.A. That's the final call. And on the third day, on the what day? The third day after Nipsey Hussle was murdered. I want you to look at this next video. Because this is what happened on the third day. Just check it out. If the brothers would pull up that video. Three days after the murder of Brother Nipsey Hussle, we witnessed a miracle from Almighty God Allah. That on that day, the gangs came together like we've never seen before. Mortal enemies coming together to pay their respects and show their love. For the first time in the history of Los Angeles gangs, black men came together on the basis of a black man murdering a black man. It reminds me what Allah says in the Holy Quran, Surah 3, titled The Family of Amran. Verses 102 and 103, Allah says, and hold fast by the covenant of Allah altogether and be not disunited. And remember Allah's favor to you when you were enemies. Then he united your hearts. So by his favor, you became brethren and you were on the brink of a pit of fire. Then he saved you from it. Thus Allah makes clear to you his messages that you may be guided. 
And from among you, there should be a party who invite to good and enjoin the right and forbid the wrong. And these are they who are successful. This was a most powerful day, brothers and sisters. And so we thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for these gang members who came together. You could hear them say all week long, tell Big Boss, we heard him. We are uniting. Takbir! 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 Oh, Allah. They call the minister Big Boss. The minister spirit is so loved by the streets that when he came to Jerusalem, because L.A. is a type of Jerusalem, that the members of the nation, when we went and paid our salute, little did we know, in my opinion, we were ushering in Palm Sunday because it was three days before Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday represented Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a foal. The foal is a young donkey. Nipsey was that young donkey. And Jesus has said to his disciples, there's a donkey in a court tied together. Go and tie them for I have need of them. And when Jesus showed up in Jerusalem, the people wanted to know, who is this man? And when Minister Farrakhan came, the streets were saying, that's Farrakhan, nigga. That's the leader. That's the big boss. And when the minister spoke, he spoke of the red and the blue star coming together. And after the minister finished speaking, when we were driving Nipsey Hussle's Hurts through the streets of L.A., the gang members started riding around tying the red and the blue rags, and they were screaming, Big Boss, we heard you. Big Boss, we coming together. I'm talking about Farrakhan, brothers and sisters. I close with this. One week after Palm Sunday, the crucifixion of Jesus started with the press. A week after Palm Sunday, huh? Palm. Palm only means a palm is when one does a military salute to a fallen soldier. And on that day, the members, after everybody else was paying their respects, the brown gangs came out. There's a picture of me embracing a Latino gang member from the 13th Street. And he said to me, Brother Tony, I'm coming here from my hood. We want you to know you are more than a father figure than just a black gang. I said, I know, brother. That's why I'm wearing a brown uniform. And that man fell in my arm. His hood fell in our arms. He cried like a baby. He said, tell Minister Farrakhan he's a father to us too. Oh, man, the spirit of God is rising. He used Nipsey Hussle. Then after that, other gang members, the Samoan gangs. Oh, my God. You ever seen the Samoan gangs? They're called the Tonga Crips. A brother, he was 6'5", came to me. Brother, you Tony Muhammad? I looked up, I said, yes, sir. He said, he said, I want you to know, we in. We in. We all wars is stopping. I'm like, wow. The Samoan, the Tonga Crips, they fed over 10,000 people that day. 
because the island that they're from in the Pacific, they say they're from an island of love. I'm talking, brother, we ain't never seen this kind of unity. On that day, the rolling 60s has been in the longest fighting war in the history of gangs in L.A. It was the rolling 60s and the A-Trade gangsters that started Crips killing Crips. And when on this day, the A-Trade gangsters and the rolling 60s came together in the parking lot, everybody got scared because that war is so bloody and so deep that when the A-Trade gangsters showed up to their mortal enemies, they faced each other and they stared each other down and then a few minutes later they embraced and they say the war is over. We are tired of this. Everybody started crying. The police started crying. The women started crying. And I want to thank there are three brothers. Brother Duran X who's a crip in my mosque, our first officer, Brother James A. Muhammad, he's a blood. Brother William, Brother Anzar, they were very instrumental that on that day, 280 different gang sets stopped all they beefing. I, I don't think you heard me. It's 500 and it's 500 and some different gangs. 280 came together to form the United Hood Nation. 280 came together to form the United Hood Nation. So I close. This enemy is in trouble. A week after this, the demonstration by the Nation of Islam. I have to thank all the members of the Nation of Islam from Mars 27, from Mars 54, from Mars 97. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. For when we came with that wreath and we had the crescent in red and blue flowers, the gang members was just crying. We did a salute and we held it for 33 seconds when we walked the sisters over to ground zero. It was so beautiful that women, about eight women, fell to their knees crying, saying, that's our nation. We got a nation. They were crying, black and brown. Sisters, you don't know how powerful you are. And the gang members, when we saluted, you saw Crips and Bloods with the ugliest salutes in the world. <laughs> but they saluted on that day. I close. One week later, that tape of the believers have reached over 50 million people around the world. I was blessed to get inbox from Denzel Washington thanking the minister for what we did. Magic Johnson. I got inbox from Naomi Campbell who inboxed me and she said, I watched this video 25 times and every time I watched it, I can't stop crying. Tell Minister Farrakhan, I said, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I got inbox from brothers from Yemen, brothers from Saudi Arabia, brothers from Palestine, inboxing us, thanking us because they never seen the strength of the nation of Islam like they seen it. So one week later, the Jews snatched Minister Farrakhan off of Facebook. You did him a favor. You snatched him off Instagram. You did him a favor. He more famous now than he ever have been. So I thank you, Black Chicago. I thank you for the Jesus that's in our midst. I came here to say that inshallah, we are planning 
a day so big in L.A. that we're going to honor the 25,000 families who lost their loved ones to violence. And now Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, have all said they want to finish out Nipsey's legacy. They want to help finish that album. And they want to dedicate and continue the peace movement. I'm talking about they've gotten in touch with Brother Jay-Z. They're in the studios now working on the album and they're going to mix the minister's voice in their lyrics from the funeral service of Nipsey Hussle. Oh, something is happening in America, y'all. And on that day, we're going to honor the 25,000 families. On that day, I said to Snoop Dogg and I said to some of the entertainers that the gang members have pledged that on that day, it's going to be a day of edutainment. We have a peace ride every month, and the bikers and the low riders and the car enthusiasts, 10,000 bikers are coming that day. 5,000 low riders. We're going to shut down the city of L.A. by God's permission. And at the end of that day, we have hundreds of gang members who are going to come to the stage, and they're going to ask the world for forgiveness. I don't think you heard me. In an act of atonement, hundreds, bloods, crips, Latino gangs, they're going to tie their rags together. And on that day, the gang members from L.A. is going to call the El Rookins. They're going to call the Vice Lords. They're going to call the Gangster Disciples. They're going to ask all gang members, let's stop the gang banging and become allies with the Nation of Islam. And get our training. Oh, brothers, sisters. When I said that to Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg said these words, Brother Tony, when the homies do that, I'm going to ask all the rap artists, we're going to come to the microphone next. And we're going to ask for forgiveness for our lyrics that help add to the game war. Something is happening, y'all. I said, Brother Snoop, then if you do that, I'm going to ask all the preachers to come and we're going to ask for forgiveness for not doing a damn nothing. And then we're going to ask for the audience to stand and ask for forgiveness for going into apathy. Chicago, y'all ready? Listen at what the gang members have asked me and I come to get your permission. He said, Minister, we got Bloods and Crips all over America. They asked me this. When we do this in L.A., we want to take 150 to 300. Do you think the gang members in Chicago will allow us to come and meet with them to tell them if we can stop, they can stop? Chicago, I come to get your permission. Can we bring the homies to Chicago? And then after Chicago, we take LA, Chicago, get on a plane, we go to New York. Then we go to Jersey. Then we go to Philly. Then we go to Atlanta. Then we go to Houston in the name of Allah. Come on, y'all, let's do this. Thank you, Chicago, and may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Let's give a well deserved round of applause from here in Chicago and all over the world.
that heard our student minister preach today. Brother Student Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. All praises due to Allah. Thank you. Ooh. Boy, we needed that shot, didn't we? And the world needed to see the proof and the evidence of the work of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And this scripture, what the devil intends for evil, God intends for good. So you can see now why nothing happens except by Allah's right. permission. And from that tragedy in Los Angeles and the death of Nipsey Hussle, look at the peace that is being produced. There's a scripture, Brother Minister, that says, um, make straight in the desert a highway for your Lord. So you ask permission from Chicago, right? Yes, sir. I mean, you knew the answer already, yeah, but really, really. he was just being respectful, you know? So we'll make straight in the desert here in Chicago a highway for our student minister, Abdul Malik Mohammed, and all of those brothers and sisters from Los Angeles to come in to this city. Because we got a whole bunch of Crips and Bloods here, but not by that name. Because Chicago is a nut to crack. But you set the example for us. What a wonderful message you gave to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Did he represent the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Did he preach? Did he teach? All oh, praises due to Allah. Brother Minister, would you like to take yes. Brothers and sisters, I just want to do the acceptance, if you don't mind. How many of you, this is your first time to a Nation of Islam meeting? Would you raise your hand if this is your first time? Wow. Wow. We're honored that you would come. I pray to God that I didn't say anything to offend you. If I did, charge it to my head and not my heart. How many of you believe that what you heard today is the truth and good for us as a people? Wow. Thank you. That tells me then you're not scared. Ain't no punk in you, huh? Then you won't resemble the attitudes that was in the Wizard of Oz. We ran into a scarecrow. He didn't have no backbone. He just didn't have no knowledge. He didn't hear the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yet. He said, if I only had a brain. Or you ain't like that lion who is being a pussycat. When you hear the teachings, you get courage because we're off to take you to the wizard. You know who the wizard is? Farrakhan. Don't be like the tin man, that truth is right there in a can, but you're doing the mannequin challenge. How many of you that heard the truth today, you're ready now to be a part of this unity and join on with the nation of Islam? Stand up, stand up. Don't make me come get you, brother. Brother. Come on. Sisters, come on. Would you give me the honors of shaking your hand? Come on, my brother. That's right. Come on up, sisters. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Please come forward to shake the hand of Student Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Mohammed on behalf of your and my brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as he welcomes you to the nation of Islam. Make your way down the center aisle 
my beautiful sisters, our strong brothers. This is what the enemy fears. This is why he falsely charges the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. This is why he calls the minister dangerous. Because he sees that he's losing control of his one slave and he sees black love and black unity. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and this great body of knowledge that we have received. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Love of the brotherhood, love of the brotherhood, love of the brotherhood, love of the brotherhood. Let's send to flight the enemy. You can tell that we have passed from death into life because we love the brotherhood. This is once again student minister Abdul Malik. Saeed Mohammed, Minister Farrakhan's Western Regional Minister. Brothers, brother, student minister is going to be here tomorrow. So part two is tomorrow. He called us to duty today, and we have to accept our responsibility and embrace the duty that God has put on our shoulders to perform. So all of the men that are present here at Mas Mariam, you are invited, whether you are registered in the nation of Islam or not, because the way we see you, we already see you as our brother. And whether you know it or not, we already see you by your nature. You're a Muslim. You too, sister. I don't care what you call yourself, but you're God's child, and you born in submission to his will. So all over the nation, this is going to be a national webcast of our Monday FOI class. That's our men's meeting. So everyone tune in, and wherever you are, you come to your FOI class tomorrow. All the men that are in the audience at the mosque, at the study groups, that are watching in the various cities, please make your way tomorrow to your class, and we will have a national webcast, and our keynote speaker once again will be none other than student minister Malik Abdul Malik Mohammed. We love you. May Allah continue to protect you, bless you, with a double portion of his spirit and the anointing you have your beautiful wife here. Oh, thank you, Sister Malika. Thank you for all of your sacrifices in helping to produce a great helper of the minister. And we want to just give you a, just a token of our appreciation. Could you come forward, Sister Malika? Please accept this on behalf of the laborers and the believers here at Mas Mariam. So let's let you know how much we love you and appreciate you. We wanted to get, I told Sister Keisha, who Sister Sandy, our national MGT captain, is out of the city. This is our first officer. I wanted her to get you a, a, a dozen roses, long stem. And I said, well, they leave back out of town, and right. she wouldn't be able to take all of those roses. So I hope you like that arrangement. We love you. It's just a token to say we love you. <laughs> you know that's right. 
May Allah continue. To and tomorrow's meeting is 6.30, okay? We're coming early because, of course, we, this is Ramadan. So 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern, okay? So we'll see you back tomorrow, brothers, at 6.30 sharp. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. Let's give another round of applause to Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad, all the way from Los Angeles. All praise is due to Allah. We're going to get ready to close out, but we have two very important pieces of information and parts of our program. If we could have our brothers and sisters with the charity receptacles come forth. This is one of the pillars of our faith. That message was invaluable and priceless. We're being asked to simply give a love offering from our hearts of charity to sacrifice out of what we've been given to show appreciation to Almighty God Allah for inspiring the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to produce men like that that are unafraid to go out and do the work of peacemakers. But we know that we need finance to do this work. But we may not have as much finance as we'd like, but whatever we've been given, let's sacrifice and give to a cause that will keep giving back to us. So whether you just have a penny, whether you just have a dollar, whether you just have five dollars, we ask that you sacrifice so that God can bless you and I for our sacrifice towards a cause that is bigger than any of us. So as we pass the charity receptacles, we want to remind all of the men in particular, not just here, but that are watching from across the country and across the world. Tomorrow, Muhammad Mosque and Muhammad Study Group is the place to be, 6.30 p.m. Central, where we're going to hear once again from the Western Regional Representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who's going to continue on his subject, God is rising, we are Farrakhan. That's for every black, brown, red, yellow man in North America and all over the planet Earth. We all need to rise with the God that is rising. So let's come together, bring somebody with you, brothers. Is that all right? All right that sounded weak, didn't it? We want to be men now, don't we? We want to be men in the reflection and image of God, and we want to come to get that guidance and that word which will inspire us to stand up like the men that God wants us to be. So, brothers, where are we going to be tomorrow at 630? That's right, FOI class. That's where we're going to be tomorrow. All praise is due to Allah. We thank you for whatever you were able to sacrifice and give towards the cause of Allah, towards the cause of the making of peace. We ask that if you had nothing to give, your presence was charity. Your smile is charity. And God's charity to us, we could never pay back because that word is going to move us when we leave out these doors today. So may God bless each of us for our intentions and whatever we were able to offer and make an intention. If you didn't have enough to give like you would like to, make an intention that next time you come back, you're going to have more to give to show appreciation to God for blessing us with this guidance. With that being said, if we could all please rise for prayer. I'm going to ask those who are still present here in Chicago immediately after prayer. We just have two or three very quick announcements, so I'm going to ask you to hold your position after prayer. Those who are watching via webcast, we thank you for joy joining us, and we will end our transmission immediately after prayer. Attention prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the Worlds the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee alone do we serve and thine aid we seek. Guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. I mean, Thank you for joining us, brothers and sisters, on the webcast. Aysam alaikum. Brothers and sisters, you can stay on your feet if no one, if you could just hold your positions before we start moving. Very quickly, I want to let everyone... Are you tired of corporate-controlled media? Then it's time to subscribe to a new way of gaining access to independent and timely news coverage. Introducing the Final Call Digital Edition. The Final Call Digital Edition is on the cutting edge of print news delivery. The 
Final Call Digital Edition carries in-depth reporting and thought-provoking analysis of both national and international news. Get out of the old and get into the new. Subscribe to Final Call Digital Edition at digital.finalcall.com. Next door at Muhammad University.